Finally, a bit more about that journey to Pluto, not just the New Horizons spacecraft, but the personal scientific journey. We hear a bit more from WashU professor Bill McKinnon about what made him so curious about something so far away. Let me ask you about how you got into this. I know that the, the, the story of the discoverer of, yeah. of Pluto, Tombaugh, was just, uh, just fascinated as a kid yes, yes. looking at the stars. Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was always interested in the planets, but of course I grew up as a boy in the 60s, and so the, the space age was like the most exciting thing going on, and of course the race to the moon with the Russians and the Apollo landings were all fabulous, but I wanted to see more and farther, and the farther away and the more exotic it was, that was uh, really interesting to me. So um, uh, after college, basically, I got into the field, and it was interesting, but at that time, we knew nothing about the outer solar system, and when I was in graduate school, the first voyagers got to Jupiter and showed for the first time what was going on with those satellites, just like I mentioned, the volcanoes on Io, the ocean on Europa, and all of that business. And that to me made, that made the, our solar system just change completely. It wasn't just Mars and the moon and the Earth. You know, it was really, there was a whole other realm out there and we could step, go step by step further and further and further. And we're not even really done. Pluto is just now the farthest point that humanity has really explored. And, and I imagine the kids looking at these images may be the next generation of explorers. Well, I would hope so. I would hope that they would put it in the back of their mind uh, that to explore these other small planets. And who knows what worlds we'll actually discover with our telescopes that are even beyond Pluto and its companions like Eris. Um, you know, years ago, I'll tell you a story, I was talking to my son's second grade class, and at that point we had discovered, not me personally, but you know, astronomers had discovered the first Pluto sort of like body also out there in the Kuiper Belt. And it didn't have, even have a real name yet now. We call it Eris now. Um, but then it was called UB313. And these kids loved hearing about UB313. And then, you know, and uh, my son would come back months later and say, the kids in my class want to know more. Like, what have, you, what have you learned now about UB313? So they were happy to memorize these crazy names. It's like a new dinosaur for, for kids. There, there's no end to exploration, is there? No, not, not at all, not at all. We, you know, we, we have all of this data on the spacecraft that we won't, we'll probably get it all down but by the end of next summer, by, the, by this time next summer, uh, we'll have pretty much all of it down. So that's a, a year's worth of Pluto mania, if you like, and then there's, there's on to new, new missions to the other planets in the future.